Hi, my name is Jack Hodgins. Welcome back to my um, channel, and we're doing the Osmo uh, Mobile. Um, we'll have a look at it. So here it is, the box itself. And you've probably noticed in a few videos I've done so far, I've been teasing you a little bit. But this is one definitely good gadget to have in your bag if you're thinking of a, 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 a stabilizer for your mobile phone, whether it's, whether it's an iPhone, iPhone 5, iPhone 6, 6s, 6 plus, iPhone 7, 7 plus, that they fit at all, and also it will fit the um, Sony, um, sorry, the Samsung uh, S7 Edge phone and those sort of size phones as well. Most compatible this this is at the moment with iOS. You get a lot more features if you've got an uh, iOS device like the Apple um, iPhones. If you run on Android like the Samsung S7 Edges, then obviously you're going to miss out a few features. Uh, this software does not support yet, uh, and it's the same with the Osmo um, Plus and the normal Osmo as well. It's the same for the Android side. I don't know when they'll be pushing towards making changes. Uh, but hopefully I'll get some emails across to them this week and get them questions answered. So let's press on with the Osmo. So what you get in the box, so you get a nice box like this. And when you open it up, you've got um, the Osmo Mobile inside. Really nicely um, inside there. And you, can, and you can probably take this out and actually use it in another case. If you can get a nice plastic case like this or a bag, this will actually slide into, you know. Um, and it does come with a bag, so in the lid itself, if we uh, undo the lid, we actually got the actual DJI Osmo bag. There's no padding in it, it's just literally a straightforward bag and, and a bit there for little accessories and stuff, uh, spare batteries and stuff like that. But I like, I like to see a padded version, you know, um, of this. So there you go, so you got your bag, stick that up there, and you've got your charging lead. This one here, take this, and uh, I'll see one of those at warning labels. We'll get rid of that, don't need that. And then now, if we get, we've also got this little nifty thing so you can put your hand through and have that around your wrist while you're holding your Osmo. So we'll put that on later. Instruction manual, quite a few actually in there, different languages, so definitely worth a read. And now the Osmo Mobile itself. You've got a battery as well, but obviously the battery is already charged and put in this so that I can do the review with rather than sort of wait around for it. So there's the, um, I'm gonna, it's definitely worth getting one of these because I've already got one of these, my, my original Osmo, which is the stand. So that way you can actually put this in, I'm just going to do now, and hold it there. Right, I thought I'd change the angle a bit so you can see this. But so there's the stand, so it's um, nicely on there, nice and neat. So what you need to do is when you first get this, is you need to, um, mount your phone on here and the way to do this so if I do this my uh, Ericsson's um, my Samsung phone Ericsson phone Samsung phone uh, so on the back of this if we turn it around you've got um, you can see there you've got this um, little wheel you can undo and as you undo it your base it but it actually uh, makes adjust the size so you find the size that suit, best suits your phone make sure the camera is on the outside so it's not actually covering over this bit here because you need the camera on that to work. Sliding right down to the bottom and then you can turn the wheel back down tightening it up really nice and fits snug. Now it's off balance so the easiest way to do this is on the back behind your phone, in other words you can see it on here, no, the phone's in the way, there's another little wheel that you undo, loosen off and what they'd say to do is loosen it off and then you can move this arm piece out so you can sort of adjust inwards or outwards until you get the balance of your phone because you've got to balance it first. Um, okay, almost there. And just keep moving it back and forwards, slide back and forwards until you've got it completely balanced. It doesn't have to be 100% as long as it sort of stays balanced like that. Then lock, lock it down, so tighten the screw at the back, back up. And then now you can power it on for the first time. Do not power this on um, when there's no phone on there. You've got to have the phone on there, otherwise you end up doing damage to the Osmo itself. So power on. Have we got the battery in there? Sure, I've got the battery in there. Yep. Yeah. Go. 
when it powers on for the very first time, you'll find this probably won't stabilize up like this one has because what you've got to do is register the phone. So the first thing to do is connect the phone by Bluetooth, which is quite straight, straightforward to do. And then you open up the DJI Go app. It senses that you've got the mobile connected and then, then it will ask you, do you want to activate it? As soon as you click activation, this will stabilize up and then lock into place. So because I've already done this, you can see it's all stabilized up nicely like so because I, I when I first got that box as, um, I was a bit daunted oh it's still it's still limp phones phones on it's not working but realize with all the DJI devices once you make the connection to the DJI Go app you activate it and it, and it all comes to life basically so don't be decided saying that it's still not working make sure it's balanced up first lock your screw in place so it doesn't come loose make sure this is locked in place for your phone and switch it on Make sure the phone's on there before you switch it on. Look, connect to the Bluetooth device. So you just go to your Bluetooth settings, find the Osmo, and it connects straight to it. Go to the Go uh, DJI Go app and go in there and select and then activate it, and then you're good to go. So that, that's that bit out the way with. So as you can see, it's stabilised now. So I can take it out. I can move it around, and it's great because um, if you're doing live streams and stuff, if you move the phone around, it also goes into like portrait mode, and then flips back for you. And you can do that, and you can turn it around, and, and there we are at the bottom. And do the sort of low shots and stuff, and it's really smooth, and it moves quite quickly as well. Very smooth, tilting, and then you've got the button at the front there allows you to put it into what we call um, torch mode. And there you go. And then if I pan up like that, the camera stays looking up still. Then double tap, resets it, nice and easy. If you find for some reason that you've got it then it's not 100% straight on here and you've got the phone in place you've got it balanced before you powered it on so it's balances like we just showed you and it's still sort of slightly off balance you can go through the software and let me get it up you can go for software and do um, uh, um, let me make sure I'm connected <laughs> so loading the software up like so I'll just skip this bit here Okay, so since I'm connected to the camera, and then away we go. So, so, so from here you can see that. So, if for instance this is not straight, it's slightly off balanced, you can go into the uh, gimbal bit itself. Wrong one, sorry, settings, gimbal, and then you can do a, what you call a, cali a do an also calibration, which I'll go through and show you what the course calibration does. Uh, leave make sure it's on a flat surface, and the, and the surface is straight. It's not wobbly or it's not an angle itself it's got to be 100% as much as um, upright as possible click on start calibration oh. and it gives you this warning sure that, sure that Osmo is on an upright position on a stable surface you may support it with your hands and the, and the gimbal it's difficult it's easier just leave it on, on the flat surface like I've got it on the stand here and then click OK and what it does it goes through a calibration with the camera and this is the calibration it goes through You can see at times what it's doing because the progress is on the screen. <laughs> so I didn't look up the leaf. Because it does this for a little while, it stays like that. When I first did it, I thought, what's going on? What's going on? And it's got a status bar on here. It goes through all these different motions and movements. And that's the calibration of the gimbal itself. So it's worth doing that just if, if, if you've got it slightly off centered and stuff. And then that'll correct all those, those um, issues for you. I know I'll get that saying I powered it on, it's a bit crooked. Why? Uh, this is why. Go through a lot of different sort of sequences here. There you go. Calibration is now successful. Click OK, and that time it should, if you've got a slight wonkiness to it, it should now be completely straight like this one is now. So it's as straightforward as that. It's nice and easy as well. And click done. And on here you've got normal pan movements uh, up and down. A bit like the Osmo itself, left to right. And you've got features like face track and things like that, which I'll show you on another video how all that features work. One thing I've noticed on here, because it's a Samsung Edge phone, so it's an Android device, um, Android is, you can't um, stream live to Facebook on this. Um, 
it's not it's not activated in there but if you put a, an Apple phone on here an iPhone it, you'll see the fun functions it's actually under the settings and just underneath the bottom bit here you'll see live stream because the Android is not supported for that just yet there's nothing there so you can't live stream from here the other way you could live stream from your phone um, without using the DJI Glow app is close the, Glow, the DJI Glow app down and go to Facebook directly itself on your phone on the app and do live stream that way because it still, still will function without um, the DJI Glow, app, DJI Glow app loaded so you can still get all the stabilization and stuff even if you've got a phone that hasn't got the DJI Go app on it, once you've got it activated, you can use any phone in this without the app. And the other thing I've also noticed on here as well is because I've got the Samsung phone, the S7 Edge forward facing camera supports 4K recording, back camera supports 720p. Okay, so this is so what I found out on here because it uses its own DJI Go app. Um, and if I just oh, do it with that so we can't see myself. Um, so if we go to the camera options on here, go to visit video resolution, because we're on the forward facing camera, the software only supports 1080p on the Android devices. doesn't show anything anymore. Even though my camera in the front supports 4K, this app will only record at 1080p, which is a bit of a shame. You can go down to 720p and 480p as well, and that goes the same with the... Um, oh, in the back. Go like that. It goes the same with the front-facing front camera as well. We go into the camera options there. It will support... Well, actually showing it support 1080p on mine, but normally the front-facing normally supports 720. But I think on my one I've got 1080p on the front camera. Um, so ch we'll, we'll check check that in a sec with the um, iPhone. I'll plug my iPhone in a sec as well. So that's one another downer on, on this. Live streaming and the camera settings. You can still use this and record a 4K on your front facing camera. If you come out the DJI Go app, close it down, again it still works, um, still will work without the DJI Go app running and load up your normal set. So that's a way around around this as well. All the functions here will still work apart from the um, snapshot button and the record button, the pan button will work. You won't be able to use active track and like that on it because also you would need the DJI Go app for that. But at least you'll be still be able to use it as a standard gimbal using your normal 4k camera at the front hopefully fingers crossed DJI will correct that um, in a, maybe the next update release right this is the iPhone um, 6 plus so it's slightly bigger than the actual um, Samsung phone on there so it stabilizes really nicely I've done a calibration with it so it's balanced out um, perfectly and works brilliantly so I wanted to sort of show you the differences so if we go to the settings tab now you've got now you've got a new tab underneath here it says live now it gives you the options to do Weibo, YouTube, and custom. Oh, look, there's no. F See? It's got no Facebook Live on it. I know when we do live from the Osmo itself, um, it actually has the settings for Facebook, but this one doesn't. So there's another limitation here that needs to be sorted out as well. Weibo, um, YouTube, custom is normally to do with um, like YouTube streaming and stuff like that. But um, no, that's didn't actually see that actually so yeah so you can only do Weibo YouTube and cu custom on this device which is pain pointless because people want to Facebook live stream more than anything else that seems to be very much common these days people are doing so this is gonna upset a few people but again as I said you don't have to use the DJI Go app to do your, fa your Facebook live streaming or any type of streaming if you've got an app on here that you want to stream from like Periscope things like that you can do it directly with because so, you get still get all the functionality of like moving into the portrait mode you would normally would do with streaming and stuff um, you get the functionality of panning stuff with the button but unfortunately you won't be able to use the record button if you're using another app that's only available in the DJI Go app and another thing I would like interesting to find out as well this this will record 1080p at the front um, and 720p at the back on the back camera because this is only the iPhone 6 not the 6s so go on the camera mode here we can go oh got to put it in the camera mode so camera mode oh I wonder if that makes a difference no it's still the same okay right so camera mode video resolution so here yeah it's showing me 1080p 30 frames um, or slightly row 720p at 30 frames. And if I reverse the camera round, 
it should give me slight, slightly smaller resolution yeah it does yeah 720p on the forward facing camera so that is correct on that side there so once you what if you, as long as you're using the DJI app you know you're about to have used the the active track um, features here there you go zooming on to the Osmo I move the box around to that first you can see it's actually following box quite nicely you go too fast oh that's not bad that's there you go a bit too fast it picks it back up again back around so long as your subjects moving slowly you've got that nice easy pan rotating around it's not bad even if you just go a little bit more quicker it does keep it up that's just pretty good going if you go too fast you end up losing it but then it recognizes it and picks it back up again so that's a uh, <laughs> that's a good feature actually that's great and you can exit that as well so those sort of features you won't be able to use if you're using your own app itself but at least you've got a way of still doing um, your selfies and still doing your um, Facebook streaming even though, the, even though DJI app does not support it so there you go that's the Osmo uh, mobile I'll do some, I'm going to do some video tests with this um, filming um, see how I get on with it I've got uh, some events coming up I've got the show in October, so it's much. I think it's the 19th of October. It's the UAV commercial show, so I'm going to get this out and do a field test with that as well. I've got some interviews coming up. I think this week and next week, which I'll make sure I use this with. Then we can see how smooth the shots are, and I'm going to do a side by side, side by side compare with the Osmo, which I'm recording on at the moment, and the mobile. I'll hold them both in the hands, and I'll be able to do. This do exactly the same thing to see which one's the most stabilist so this looks really good and it looks well built as well and what I like about this it all this is a really nice finish nice design and it looks really strong as well but there's no gimbal lock on these we nice if DJI fixed it like a, a gimbal lock on that so it stays um, pretty much locked in place and and hopefully not get damaged right so on the same one here you got just quick overall if I forget You've got the charging cable, which is plug it into a USB uh, charger device or something like that, and that plugs into the port on the front here, which is normally would be for a um, microphone on the Osmo, but on the Osmo mobile, it's a charging point. So don't get that confused. Um, you can take your battery out and charge it separately. Um, you, uh, I've got uh, the new, I've got the new four-way charger, which supports the Osmo older batteries and also the new high density batteries as well. This is absolutely great. So it's you buy one of these, but you haven't got a, a drone or Phantom or Inspire. Make sure you buy the, the power cable to go with it. Um, otherwise, um, you won't be able to charge batteries. But if you do own an Inspire or Phantom 4, um, you can actually use the charging cable because it uses the same port that you charge your RC with uh, in there, which is pretty handy. So um, and they're not very expensive either so and that's it so that's the Osmo mobile any questions you've got guys remember please comment below and I'm happy to answer them so anything you want me to show demonstrate with this uh, or if you actually live local and you like to come down and physically see it in your hands put your phone into it and have a go you're welcome to just get in touch with me so thanks for watching guys remember to um, fly safe be safe